everybody. Uh, I'm going to do a little demo today about how to use Flipgrid. If you don't know already, Flipgrid was purchased by Microsoft earlier this year and is now free for all educators. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you are going to want to log in with your Google account. So click log in with Google and then choose your Summit K-12 domain email address. And once you log in, um, most likely this space will be blank for you if you have not used Flipgrid in the past. Um, I have, so there, I have a couple of Flipgrids that I've already created down there. Now, Flipgrid is a really great way to let your students' voices shine um, through video response. Um, and I will show you a couple different ways that they can do that. Um, and it's really quick and easy and customizable here. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna start a new grid. There's a couple different options about when you start a new grid, how you wanna do it. The easiest is using your school email domain, which is pointed out here. What you'll end up doing is typing in the summitk12.org domain, which means that only students that have that address domain will be able to log in to the Flipgrid. Uh, you could also input all of your students individually. That makes me think it's a little bit more time consuming and wouldn't be as useful um, because all of our students do have a Summit K-12 um, email address. Now it might be easier for our K-1s, but I've never done it in the past. I've always just given them the code for the grid. And then finally, there is a public option if you are creating it for more of a general open PLC idea or um, sharing kind of ideas with others. For us though, we really wanna take it with the school email domain and I'll show you where you add that after a couple of steps. So I'm going to name this grid Media Tech 1819. And I love that you can customize the code that you're gonna give students because if it's something like MWGF94, students really struggle to remember what it is. But if I type in SE Media, it's a lot easier for them to grasp and understand that what we're typing in. And it also really does a nice job of telling you if that domain is available or not for your Flipgrid. And then you choose a photo. I like this little cat with this glasses here. Now here's where I'm talking about the school domain and that only students with the domain will be able to log in. So what you're going to type in here is summitk12.org. You add the domain and therefore only people with that address are able to log in and access your Flipgrid. This makes it a little bit more private for students. I'm going to hit launch my grid. Tells me I'm ready. There's an option if you want to uh, view it or a possible. there's different ways you can share that. You can give them a QR code. You can give them a bed code. Um, the grid link is really nice to just copy and put into Google Classroom. Now I'm going to hit all set. For some reason, lately when I create new grids, apparently these two topics come up. So you can now create different topics. For me, I could create a first grade, second grade, third grade grid in as a topic, or I could create grids such as digital citizenship, how to do self-checkout. There's lots of different options, but I want to show you what happens when you create a new topic. So here I'm going to hit new topic and say this is how to find and check out a book. And I could have a couple of kids explain the process. If I'm having kids explain, maybe I want to give them no more than two minutes. Um, I really like this feature because you can customize it for what you're looking for. If you're looking for a really quick response, you can only give you can give them only 15 seconds. If you're looking for an extended response or um, answer, you could also give them up to five minutes. I'm going to say that most kids won't pay attention to how to check out a book and find it in the library with more than two minutes. So I'm going to hit the two minutes. The display time and date is going to go there and then a topic description. So create a video explaining the steps to finding and checking out a book at SC. Okay, simple, explains the task at hand. Now here's a couple different things that I like is I can vid monitor the videos. I can preview them before they're posted to the grid. Um, in the past, I haven't had a huge issue with that. Students do a pretty good job of monitoring themselves. 
I have had to once in a while remove a video that I didn't think was appropriate in the sense it was too silly or too goofy. If you're having issues where you think it isn't a, a, something that you want to do, you can just flip this on. Um, topic status, you can change if you're not allowing anyone to add to it currently. This is kind of great when you're just introducing or you're building a grid, um, but not intending for them to use it. Or you can make it totally inactive, which they can't even go and uh, look at the videos that are currently on that. I currently am going to keep this one open. Then you have a variety of options about how you would like them to respond on the grid, recording a video, uploading a video. I would say that those two are probably the most popular. Um, the little record thing comes up and it shows them. You can upload videos from YouTube, that or YouTube and Venmo, or you can um, also upload a video you created just with your own webcam on your thing. Uh, you can add pictures, a Giphy, or an emoji. So you get to choose what's available for students and how you'd like them to respond. This is another great feature is if you want to add an, a link to something in Google Classroom or Google Docs explaining what your expectations are for the assignment, you can do that here. Only five are allowed, but I think that would be more than enough uh, for what you're looking for. Then there's some video features that also um, I really enjoy. Um, you can allow students to add stickers or drawings or none. Um, I like the stickers kind of because it's kind of fun for students to be able to add parts of a video that they like. I tend to turn off video views. Um, students really don't need to see how many views that they've had. Um, if the links you post, you can change them to public or private. So maybe only your students can see it or it doesn't matter who sees it because there's not really anything that's um, confidential in there. Um, I like also being allowing students to reply to each other's videos and um, video titles are great when you're, especially when you're uploading another video from some other place that maybe doesn't have their photo in it uh, because then you can have them put their name or a little bit more detail about what the video is on. Um, there's different types of feedback, whether you just allow them to make comments versus if you were to add a rubric. Then you're going to hit the Create Topic button. Now, students have access to the grid, but then if you specifically only want them to go to this topic, you get a new link down here that allows you to share only that topic if that's what you're looking for. Another great way to just drop it into Google Classroom. And hey, got it here. Now I have no responses, which is fine. Um, and then as this kind of fills up, you will get to view the responses here. If I go back to my grids, I will show you one we created a couple years ago with students. Um, there's different topics in here. Um, they made col colony commercials. Um, letters from a fifth grader was a really good one too. So students, we have them write a letter to the incoming fifth graders, and then we had them video themselves reading their letter. So here's what they all are. It was great. Instead of passing the letters around last year, uh, students could just go and watch videos. And we gave them about 15 or 20 minutes in time to talk about uh discuss afterwards with their friends and as a group um, things that they were excited for based on what they heard and things that made them nervous. Um, that's kind of a general um, overview of Flipgrid uh, for today.